We've already seen a bit of the Aztec society in the introduction but believe me, it gets even better. It seems the Aztecs copied many of their traditions from the Mayans or perhaps both copied from some other Mexican tribes. Either way, the Aztecs played the ball game just like the Mayans. And they also had a calendar of great importance which they called the Sunstone. I'm sure you've seen this before. No seriously, I'm sure of it, it has been the background for this lecture the whole time, but you've probably seen it other places as well. It is found on the Mexican peso as well as in lots of modern Mexican art. Did you know it was a calendar? History of Mexican archaeology is the Sun Zone. Miraculously escaping the fury of the Spanish, it was found in 1790 in Mexico City and incorporated into the eastern facade of the cathedral. The fascinating symbols incised into this Aztec treasure placed it at the center of numerous religious events. The relic can now be seen at the National Museum of Anthropology in Mexico City, a museum that contains many testaments to the origins and the histories of the peoples who populated Central America over the course of the millennia. But perhaps the most precious is the Sunstone. Archaeologists studied the disc for years in an attempt to reveal the mystery of its symbols. Today, they think they have the answer. The Sunstone is a calendar, actually a double calendar. The complicated symbols refer both to a division of time based on religious precepts, where the solar year is 260 days long, and to a non-religious one, which divides the year exactly into 365 days. Other symbols describe the life of the planet, breaking it down into five solar ages, the so-called cosmogonic suns, and date the creation of the world to the 13th of August, 3114 BC, and its end to the 22nd of December, 2012. There are different interpretations, and there are certainly many mysteries still hidden in the signs inscribed on the sunstone by wise hands. Perhaps time alone can give us the final answer. Get it? It's all big and heavy, so it would make a stupid watch still don't get it? Well, maybe when you're older or a super historian like me. The calendar played a role in Aztec religion, again just like the mayor. It seems though, that the Aztec weren't nearly as focused on it. The Aztec seemed pretty willing to do anything at any time in the name of religion. The Aztecs absorbed into their own culture two important gods from earlier peoples. Tlaloc, the god of rain, and the plumed, feathered serpent god called Quetzalcoatl, who amazingly did not demand unending human sacrifice. As Quetzalcoatl was the god of agriculture, education, painting, and music, it was enough to sacrifice butterflies and snakes and birds to him. People also offered him jade, incense, and tortillas. For the Aztecs, religious rites and sacrifices were a necessity, the only way to earn the benevolence of the gods. They believed they were warding off famine, natural disasters, and defeats in battle. There were quite a lot of Aztec gods that demanded human sacrifices. Tlaloc, the god of rain. Coatecue, the earth goddess, depicted as an old masked woman wearing a narrow skirt tied at the waist with a belt of serpents. Xutecutli, god of fire. Mayawale goddess of inebriating beverages, especially the most popular at the time, pulque. So, clearly sacrifice was a large part of the Aztec religion. It was far more violent and frequent than it was with the Mayans. In fact, Aztec history tells of one four-day religious festival where over 20,000 people were sacrificed. That's 5,000 a day, and over three per minute for four full days. Historians have proven that this may actually have been possible. But even then it seems unlikely. I mean come on, what do you do with 20,000 bodies that have no hearts? And who seriously would sit there and count that high? It was probably many sacrifices, maybe up into the thousands, and the witness simply exaggerated or guessed a number. Whatever the case this proves that sacrifice was very common for the Aztecs.
And lastly we'll look at how the Aztecs handled the other. The Aztecs grew their empire in the same way most people did, they attacked their neighbors. At first it was the Aztecs who were chased off, but as they grew in power they got revenge on those who had attacked them. The Aztecs were such feared warriors that often they wouldn't even have to fight. People would just give up, if they were threatened. These freaks were willing to wear people's skin. I wouldn't want to mess with them either. Plus, it wasn't all bad, if you were conquered by the Aztecs. You got to keep on living pretty much as you had before. You got to keep your religion, your language, and even sometimes your leaders. The only real change was that you had to pay tribute, basically taxes, to the Aztecs. You had to provide them with food, bird feathers, or jewels as payment for being part of their empire. The tribes were okay with this for a while, but when problems like starvation popped up they got mad at the Aztecs for not taking care of them. Some of these tribes became very angry with the Aztecs. The Spanish arrived in Mexico as the Aztecs were expanding. They were very happy to find these tribes angry at the Aztec. The Spanish were led by Hernando Cortes who was known as a conquistador. Cortes arrived in Mexico in 1519, about 30 years after Columbus first landed in the Americas. He perfectly fit the description of an Aztec god named Quetzalcoatl. He had a beard and light skin, and had arrived by boat. The Aztecs believed that Quetzalcoatl whatever, had been kicked out of Mexico, and would one day return. If he returned in the year one read it would mean doom for the Aztecs. Amazingly, one read was our year 1519. Yikes. Where did you get this? Cortes named his crew the Holy Company. He landed with about 600 men with metal armor, some trained fighting dogs, guns and a few horses. The Aztecs had not seen anything of these things before and were terrified. Cortes learned about the anger of the other tribes, and asked them to join him against the Aztecs. By the time he reached Tenochtitlan he had an army of thousands. He marched into the city, and captured the Aztec ruler Montezuma without even a fight. Montezuma hoped that Cortes would just take some gold and leave. He didn't and the Aztecs didn't re in peaceful for long.